There's lots of awesome websites where you can download free 3D models. So one such website is TurboSquid. Now they do offer commercial models as well as you can see. But if you come to the site and under price for max, if you set this to zero and then press apply, this will display everything they have for free. There's a really awesome T-Rex model I found here, which I've downloaded. Now, of course, most of these aren't dot blend files. You can see actually which file type is available. So most of them are object or FBX or dot max. There's a few blends in there. But if you're curious about what kind of files can you use in Blender, just open up Blender and under File and Import, here are the different file types that Blender can by default import. You do have to sign up for an account at this particular website, but not really a difficult process. And it's free, of course, so you have access to all these awesome files, which is totally cool. And so I've downloaded this T-Rex file here. And what we need to do to get this into Blender is minimize this here. And so here's the file that I've downloaded. And what I want to do is put this file, or if you've spent an hour browsing through some files from different websites and you've got a whole bunch of them, is locate your library folder. And then I would recommend putting these in your models folder and uh, putting the appropriate ones in different categories. So I've got this animal folder here. So I'm going to take the T-Rex and just drop it straight in there. And then so back in Blender, if I go into my models folder and animal here, and then I press my expand library button. So here's that T-Rex FBX OBJ zip file. So with the Sensei format assets library, we can actually just import these objects even as zip files. So if I were to click this cube, press X to delete, and then click on the file, all I have to do is press append. And this gets unzipped for me. And you see that we now have this T-Rex FBX OBJ folder here. Now this file came with two different file types. If I click in here and in here, this came with the T-Rex model.fbx and T-Rex.obj. So if yours happened to load the object file, then I would go to File, New, and then just come into this folder and click on the T-Rex model.fbx and press Append, and then it should append this. If you're using the latest version of Sensei Format, then this should have automatically switched over to Material Viewport Shading, but if it's still in Solid, you can just come here and switch to Material. Or if you are having trouble importing this object, you may want to go back and manually first unzip that file. And then you can just click on the .fbx file and press append and that will import it into the scene. So one big difference in the file types that you can import into Blender as opposed to regular .blend files is that we don't get visual thumbnails of say the .obj or .fbx. So what would be really nice is if we were able to, whenever clicking on our animal folder inside of our models folder, it would be if we could just directly see the thumbnail of the T-Rex and just click and drag it into our scene or append it into our scene, rather than having to come to this folder here, which may be oddly named depending on whatever the person named it, and then have to click through here and then browse through the proper file. It'd be much nicer if we just had this as a dot blend. So that's the first thing that we should do. So let's go up back into the animal folder. So if I go up another directory, here are all my different model categories. So here in the animal folder, let's go ahead and press this down button here, which this will save this file as a dot blend file. So now the next time that we click on our animal folder, we can just have direct access to this T-Rex file here. And so I'm not too in love with that thumbnail, so we can actually change that by just zooming in with our camera down here, however we want this thumbnail to look, like say this. Then we could press this down button again, and that will save over that. Also, I think I want to give this a different name, so we can just right click this, and we could just call this T-Rex here. You do want to leave the dot blend on there or it will go white again and then click like that. Okay, this part may seem a bit weird. 
Even though we just changed the name of this file to trex.blend, the file that is open still actually has the name from before when we changed that name. So what you would want to do to make sure that you are working on this trex.blend and when you save over this, it doesn't save to that other file's names, just click and drag it into the 3D view. And now whatever changes we make to this, if we, when we go to file and press save or just press control S or even press down again to save over the current open file, these changes will be saved to trex.blend. So my ultimate goal here is to have a really awesome library of models to which I can just see their thumbnail and append various items at will to create one big scene and not have to click through a bunch of folders and stuff and just be able to see this all readily available and be able to use it. So what I would like to do is get rid of this original import folder here. One thing you need to make sure you do if you plan on doing that, if your object has materials that are using images such as this T-Rex skin here, is you would want to go to file and under external data, click pack all into dot blend. And so now all the images and everything that this T-Rex uses are all packed into this file here. So I could press this down arrow, which saves this file. So if you think about it, the idea behind these little arrows is that the down arrow means bringing this file into this folder. And then when we click the up arrow to expand the library, this is in regards to bringing stuff out of the library into Blender. We can actually delete any file in this folder by just clicking on it and then pressing delete. However, we cannot delete folders or that is directories like this. And if you think about it, that's actually a good thing because you don't want to accidentally delete half your hard drive in a folder or something in Blender one day. So what I'll do is go back into the original folder where we dropped this zip off here and I'm going to right click this and delete this. Yes, delete that. And since we packed all the images and everything that folder was using, we now just have this nice little file here. So if I click this and then open it back up again, it reflects the changes uh, that I did on the computer where I deleted that folder. And so you see, I've got this other folder in here called snake and it's, you know, full of textures and these object files and whatnot. But eventually what I want to do is have this entire library of models have each category just filled with these blend files that I can see the thumbnail of, easily adjust, change, add one to a file if I need, append, link, and so on. Okay, so we're pretty good here. I'm gonna close that up. Now to the actual file itself. It's awesome that there's all these thousands of free models and assets and stuff you can get online. But at the same time, it's a, a bit like the Wild West because for starters, you never know uh, what work actually went into a model, if the model's gonna be that great or if the textures will be of any decent kind of quality. Also, you don't know what software the person was using when they created the thing and if that software where they exported that file, if that did the proper things it needed to, whether or not the person set things up how it needed to be. It can vary from time to time what you get. So for instance, when we you know loaded this, it's a bit tiny. So I might want to you know press S to scale this up some, adjust my camera here a little bit. And we haven't talked much about materials yet, but that's one issue too you may experience with a lot of these you know free folders. So this is like stuff that you would wanna make sure and take a look at. So we'll be taking a closer look at materials and things like that in the future. So for now, I would just recommend to do your best with the knowledge you do have about Blender, you know, just going over these files, making sure things look good. And you may find, for instance, some models are sculpted really well or modeled really well, but the textures or materials aren't that great. And so if that's the case, then really what you need to do is be honest about that and just get rid of them. So the materials on this are actually pretty good, but if they weren't, say I wanted to get rid of all of the materials in the particular file, maybe they, they just sucked or they were broken or whatever, you could tap A to select everything and then press Q to bring up your ZB options and under material options, press remove materials and that would get rid of all the materials. And so that's probably something you'll have to do more often than not. Because in the long run, what we really want is to build up a really nice library of readily available assets, not assets that are full of shitty textures and materials and stuff that we have to deconstruct and clean up every time we want to add them to a scene or, you know, drop them into some cool thing we got going on.